Okay, welcome everyone on this video. So today uh, we're going to discuss about fuzzing a Python code. So um, it's a subject I already mentioned uh, some times ago uh, with uh, one specific video uh, and, and tutorial about fuzzing Python code with Python fuzz. So um, actually in December this year, um, if um, if you miss it, uh, actually, there is this uh, announce by uh, Google. Uh, they announce the uh, Atari's Python fuzzer. So they develop a specific fuzzer for Python code. So I was thinking, so maybe uh, we can uh, just uh, give it a try. So that's what I've done. And I want to show you uh, a bit more uh, how easy it is to uh, make it run and trigger some crashes in Python code. Uh, that's really, uh, really the most easy things you, you're going to do today. So uh, basically, um, this uh, Atheris Fuzzer is available right there on the uh, Google GitHub repository on Atheris. And uh, basically, it's a, a coverage-guided uh, Fuzzer uh, written um, in, um, in C, C++, and uh, Python. So uh, basically, the idea will be um, this Fuzzer will actually take your Python code. Um, it's going to compile it into native code. Uh, using like CPython and uh, you're going to uh, use uh, LLVM and especially libfuzzer um, on, under the hood. That's basically the idea. So it's really easy to install. Uh, actually, we can do that together. But since I, um, you will see that um, I'm inside this folder currently. Uh, oh, by the way, all the, um, uh, the, I will show you like a cheat sheet, right? This one and the code are uh, in the description below. Uh, so you can just uh, Take a look. Uh, register yourself in the in my um, online platform where I'm putting everything. That's basically this one, and you can just get uh, everything. It will be like like that. So that's the that's the idea. So this further uh, for the installation, really basic. Pip three install and uh, Atheris. So you will see it's already. Uh, no, it's not pip. It's pip three. And uh, you will see it's already satisfied uh, on my case. And then uh, you need to select a target. So uh, I decided to go uh, for a beautiful soup. Uh, that's a famous one. Um, and actually, I, I have used it, uh, used it recently. Um, and uh, basically, beautiful soup is, um, let me show you the pi right there. That's a library that will help you to scrap information from red page. So that's something that is uh, well used and well famous. And uh, the API is just really simple. Basically, you have from BS4 uh, import beautiful soup, and then you have um, soup equal beautiful soup, and you are uh, providing some some stuff uh, into it. Of course, you can take a look at the documentation. That is, uh, I suppose, uh, let me check. Uh, I think there is a link somewhere. So it's a beautiful through three uh, documentation, but you should see the um, the most recent one somewhere. But yeah, whatever. So uh, basically, uh, we're going to use this uh, simple um, usage. Uh, so in that case, we're going to uh, specify that we're going to first the HTML uh, parser, uh, but you can, of course, uh, first the XML parser and some uh, other one. So it will be really basic and really simple. So first of all, what you will uh, need um, is actually a basic uh, snippet of code, of Python code, to show you how to run the uh, Atheris further. So in that case, we're going to go right there. In the example, we have this one. So that's perfect. That's what we want. So I will uh, do that. Uh, of course, I already have the stuff already done, and you will see that it's pretty simple. But I will. Uh, do it right now with you uh, and it will make uh, more uh, sense for you so basically we are importing atheris sys uh, we are uh, calling setup with the argument that's uh, also a way to provide arguments to atheris especially if we trigger some crashes and you will see then we are specifying the uh, on try point uh, or fuzzing function and that's basically what will be uh, this one so the initialization the setup will be done at this point and then we're going to call uh, the fuzzer so that's the idea so inside this function we're going to put our uh, code uh, so uh, that's basically what will be done uh, right there so uh, what we are looking for is uh, we are fuzzing beautiful soup. So we will need some snippet of code and we have some quick start right there. So let's do from BS4 import beautiful soup. Uh, of course, I mentioned, I forget, but uh, you need to have that install. So you just copy that, uh, this pip3 install, pip3 
3. Install beautiful soup. Everything is already satisfied for me. And then we're gonna call beautiful soup right there. So we are copy pasting this stuff and we're gonna provide some data, some code. Um, just a quick reminder, fuzzing is basically the idea where you're gonna provide a random or pseudo random input uh, inside a program a, a method a function and the purpose is to make it crash so for python uh, your main goal will be for example to catch um, uncaught um, exception in python meaning that exceptions that have not been handled properly inside your code uh, already that's the that's the idea so uh, as you can see, we are uh, calling beautiful soup with data. It could be uh, enough, but as I mentioned, we can specify the parser and it will be, um, I mean, it's as you want. Uh, if we are not specifying anything, um, actually we can maybe trigger more code because we will get um, um, at some point in, into beautiful soup. I suppose there is some um, like a detection mechanism that will try to detect which kind of input we are providing uh, to beautiful soup. So it could be interesting to fuzz this stuff as well and maybe trigger some bug uh, inside. So we have beautiful soup data, soup, and we can even go deeper and also call soup prettify. Uh, it's like some uh, extra function that we're gonna call. Uh, in that case, we are not ju just gonna call the parser uh, right there, uh, but we also gonna call uh, prettify, meaning that we're gonna add some um, manipulation, some operation um, inside the process. So that's pretty much all. Uh, if you want to specify the stuff, you can use uh, like this example that is provided, as I mentioned, on the description. So like HTML parser, we're going to provide that right there. And yeah, that's pretty much all. You are saving the, the, the stuff. So in that case, I will say uh, fuzzing BS4. Um, let's do um, test. OK. And we're going to call our fuzzer really simple uh, as well just gonna call python 3 python 3 uh, we're gonna call our function uh, or file so using bs4 tests and that's all we're just gonna run that and you will see that uh, some stuff is happening so let me show you a bit more detail so as you can see um we have some information we have lib further mentioned uh, as i uh, explained to you and you have some new functions that are detected and we have some coverage information right there so the coverage is going up and so on we have a lot of text a lot of stuff that is happening uh, but uh, yeah basically this printf uh, this print um, line i suppose come from the library himself uh, itself and um, basically maybe there is a way to remove that or whatever but yeah it's just some text stuff um, so let's move on you can see that after some time and it's pretty uh, immediate uh, you're gonna cut one exception so that's one exception that uh, i'm cutting all the time uh, actually I, i've done the tests to be sure everything was working properly and it's the same way as i, I was trigger triggering the other time we i have multiple crashes and uh, it's always the same um, type error um, exceptions that are not caught uh, properly. So the good stuff uh, as well is uh, since libfuzzer will actually save um, some stuff, uh, the, the crashing sample right there on your system, it's really easy for you to just replay the stuff. So you can just do, um, in that case, Python fuzzing BS4 test and you are providing the uh, crashing sample. So this one, in that case, uh, crash uh, 143. Um, crash 143 and uh, if you are replay, replaying that as you can see it's crashing directly so in that case it seems that uh, it's coming from the bs4 html parser this specific line so it will be in, uh, this line is calling the parser feed uh, and inside the html parser.py uh, that's where the markup so yeah the issue comes from there so basically the html parser so something you can also do in that case it's awesome we successfully uh, trigger a bug in the um, html parser you can of course um, use another one so in the case let's give a try to the xml parser so let's run the further again and uh, yeah you can see right there that's uh, strangely it's crashing directly 
So uh, couldn't find three of feature for XML. Oh, it's maybe because you need to specify XML parser. Let's see. Okay, so as you can see, the good things with that is um, if you are doing something wrong with like the API call, you will directly trigger some uncode exception. So that means there is something wrong that is happening. It shouldn't be happening uh, like that. So uh, that's my bad. I've maybe uh, been a bit too fast. Um, it was like beautiful soup. Yeah, XML like that. So I was, I was hoping that it was working well uh, i mean as a, as the one is mentioned right there but maybe not for that so in that case you want to um, go uh, search for uh, the solution uh, online meaning that uh, especially the documentation of beautiful soup um, and uh, see how you can call a different uh, parser uh, that's the that's the idea um, yeah so um oh documentation let let me just give it give a quick look I'm, uh, I'm surprised um so in that case you were looking for beautiful soup so as you can see html parser that's when we have targeted and uh, maybe you have a way to uh, specify some other one uh, let's see beautiful soup yeah i will get uh, a lot of them oh okay so for example right there this one will be the python html parser that uh, i'm gonna parse so that's really interesting then I can uh, trigger like this uh, LXML parser and there is another one and there is the HTML5 uh, library. So as you can see, just using beautiful soup, you can actually parse some other uh, stuff. So let's, um, no, so let's give a try to this one maybe. And um, also I want to quickly uh, discuss about something else right after. So it's still crashing directly. I don't know why. Um, so maybe there is actually some something wrong happening, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it will be on the API. Okay, so let's move on on maybe this one, the HTML5 lib, and see if this one is working. So let's see. No, this one is crashing directly as well. So yeah, maybe it's uh, actually yeah feature not found. Oh, you oh you, you you maybe need to specify the feature directly. Um, let me check. HTML parser will be like the default one. So maybe there is some um, some specific uh, feature to be provided. Let me check this one, HTML. Okay, this one, and do we need something else? No. Okay. Okay, my bad. So ideally, you need to, to go a bit deeper uh, into that. And as you can see, you can even specify some encoding and stuff like that. So uh, you can even uh, fuzz um, even deeper and find some other stuff. Some things that can actually be interesting um, in that case, um, if you want to do like differential fuzzing, uh, you can actually try to um, pass some stuff with the HTML parser and then try the other implementation, other um, stuff that is available like the HTML5 lib and um, then compare the result and try to find logic bugs, meaning that maybe one implementation will pass the HTML differently than the other one, and it will be really interesting uh, for you to 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 do so and to detect that. So that will be uh, a good way. It's uh, I mean differential fuzzing is one of the most efficient way uh, to find logic bugs. So that's uh, that's why. If you uh, want to take a look at uh, Atheris and a more uh, deeper uh, example. Um, you can take a look actually at the um, example fuzzers right there on the Atari's folder. There is like JSON, uh, YAML, and, and some other. Uh, that's pretty nice because you will also get some example of right there, the first data provider, meaning that you can ask Ataris to generate some particular uh, type of data as input and not just some random stuff. So, or pseudo so random. For example, right there, you have the first data provider, and you can uh, make it clear for uh, the further to okay, please generate me an integer uh, in this specific range. Uh, please generate me like a float, um, like a list, a string, uh, if I remember. Yeah, generate me a string, a Unicode char only Unicode character, and so on and so on. So, you can really like tweak your uh, further and especially your fuzzing harness uh, to uh, fit what you need and just go deeper uh, into the stuff. 
So I hope you uh, enjoyed this quick tutorial. Um, as I uh, as I mentioned, really easy as you have seen in. I think we are like in 15 minute video right now. Um, really simple, uh, really efficient. Uh, I'm really happy that Google provide this uh, this stuff uh, that's adding uh, one uh, another further for Python code and uh, actually one that will be even more uh, maintainable because it's under the hood, it's leap further and we also like uh, get some benefits uh, of uh, the evolution of live further uh, over the time so i'm really uh, happy they done add and congratulations to the to the google team so i hope you enjoy um, don't hesitate to um, register to um, my um, online platform regarding fuzzing and you would get access to the video and all the the sorry i forgot to mention the cheat sheet right there uh, this one sorry so uh, i i provide all everything you have seen on the in this uh, courses right there on this cheat sheet and also of course the, the source code of it so everything is available there and um, of course if you want you can also subscribe to the newsletter and and be aware when there is some new uh, tutorial uh, coming um, and yeah that's pretty much all uh, please subscribe and um, see you in the next video thank you